Hey, hey, you're back in the garage with Easy Jeezy. And today's video is going to be a continuation of 16 stock 1600 dual port power enhancers. Things that give you the feeling that you have made an improvement gives your engine more power. The very first thing that you've got to do, short little review here, is a quality tune-up. Put some new spark plug wires on it. New spark plugs. Make sure that you gap them. Get the, Make sure that you have a good condenser and points. Replace them. New cap. New rotor. Make sure you get the correct ones. Uh, check out your carburetor. Make sure that it's, it's clean and adjusted properly. I've just been making videos on 1600 dual ports. I'm going to blend this all into a playlist. So... You can see that I have a full flow system. This is a worn out type engine. We're low in compression. Go back and watch the last few videos I've uh, made. Uh, the question here that everybody's going to be wanting to know is how did those 1.25 ratio rockers work out on the stock setup? So what I'm saying is that I bought a full set solid rocker shafts and 1.25 ratio rockers and I they fit just fine on the stock setup some people say that the stock setup will make noise but if you're using stock springs and everything's the same we found by measurement that this camshaft was wore down 20 thousandths or more on the intake lobe and the exhaust lobe as well and by putting the ratio rocker arm we didn't make a huge performance enhancer what we did was bring this thing up a little past stock about twenty thousandths above what stock was now the original ones were one to one and I, I recently read that it was when the 1500s came out that they CC engines that they came out with the 1.1 ones and supposedly Volkswagen never made 1.25 but I have some that either somebody made them from raw material I think they were pretty popular and we put them on this and I went back to a test hill in the foothills and where I had struggled to just barely make it to the top of a mountain I was able to go up and it was a little bit better it's not night and day difference guys but everything is accumulative everything comes a little bit at a time the engine revved higher quicker with these type of tips they weren't as restrictive we've added the ratio rockers we did a full tune-up on it we um, <coughs> have a different intake manifold on it. It was already there. I didn't purchase it for this test, but it, it claims to have 10% better flow. And it's got heat like you can't believe. The biggest problem with running any kind of center mount carburetor is not enough manifold heat. Gasoline will drop 36 degrees in temperature when it comes in and goes from a liquid to a vapor. That is a basic physics principle that is a fact 36 degrees so if it's 60 degrees outside and you take this up and you don't have manifold heat you're gonna see frost along your intake down here and you're gonna have to be in an over rich condition and it just will run poorly and liquid gasoline does not burn if it becomes a vapor and is atomized and gets into that cold section it will return back to a liquid and it will put puddle and pool and it will get kicked along the manifold here and when you rev it up it's going to get into the the cylinders and it creates a really lean condition it's not that it's flooding that's not what's happening it's a lean condition that is what's happening and the only way to get rid of it is to have heat or eliminate it altogether and you eliminate it by adding dual carburetors out here on the edges 
and the best way to go is port on port. And I'm trying to demonstrate to you things to do that you will feel the difference. So I don't have a bone stock fresh 1600 dual port, but most of you don't either. So if you want a little bit more power and you're too cheap to do a total rebuild, then these are some things that I've found that is improving this ride. And I have a test hill that I'm going back to that's very steep and high and I'm just using seat of the pants. I wish I had a dynam dynameter but this is this is why I own this style of car. Typically I don't like driving it long drives because it's very tiring. It's low, noisy and it's loud and above 45-50 miles an hour it'll wear you out. So what's the next step in this project? Where do we go from here? I'm going to give you a big mouthful of information here. What I plan on doing today, since I've got this wonderful hot manifold because of the design of this, a header system sucks. If you've got one of these header systems that goes from this side to this side, you're not getting as much heat as you could across that intake manifold. This carburetor lacks heat. It does get some heat, but it's not enough. It's nothing like that stock one. And yeah, you could fabricate it. You could take this and, and cut it off here and continue it up here and put it in to the collector somehow. There's people that can do that. I can't find the right material. I can't come up, seem to come up with it on my own. So I am worrying about it. I ain't worrying about it. That all costs money. And I think exhaust systems in particular are one of the <laughs> things that you see most available. And it won't help the system. Everybody tells you it's a restrictive exhaust. It's not. This is not a restrictive exhaust. It's ugly. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be shown. It's ugly. It sits up underneath. It's compact. And this hangs out past the stock bumper. And you don't see it. And the deck lid comes right down here, you know, uh, below it. It's out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind, cheap to make. Hey, that's mass production. But, you know... Uh, we're not, we haven't made any internal changes. This isn't a stroker. It's not high compression with a cam in it. It's a worn out stock engine and so is yours. So don't worry about it. Don't get hung up on it. And it's, you want to buy a $15 aftermarket exhaust because it sounds better? If, if what you hear is what you're after. If you're after a new sound, then do whatever the hell you want. But your car's not going to run as good and your gas mileage is going to go down. My gas mileage, I finally ran out of gas in my tank, and I went to a gas station. This car has two gas tanks in it, so I switched tanks after I ran out, and I went to a gas station, put exactly one gallon in, and then I switched to that tank, and I drove the car, normal driving, and I got 32 miles to the gallon. Yeah, best I got in that was 27, and that's a smaller carburetor and a bigger engine makes sense bigger engine 1776 with a 30 pick one and a stock cam this one's got a worn out stock cam but I just added these ratio rockers which brought the intakes back up but I was feeling pretty good about it and I've had these uh, FRD 34 Delordo single throat carburetors for a long time these are type 3 manifolds and I could never get this crummy. I hate these bell crank leakages. I absolutely do not like those. I don't like the ones that come on Cadrons, and I don't like the one on this one. And there was a problem with it, and I may not be able to run it. I'm just going to have to go through it and see if I have the patience to overcome what the problem was. These ducts are what's in the way. The linkage doesn't sit in the right spot, or it, it hangs funny. It's got this... <laughs> I don't like it. So we might not be able to use that, but I'm going to give it a try. The first one, since I have this exhaust that makes good manifold heat, if I can find something to stick in here 
to get this manifold hotter because I've never been able to get satisfactory heat. I even threaded I even threaded the openings down here, 3 8 pipe thread, because I had it in my mind that I might take a portion of my oil, my engine oil, and run it through there to, to create heat. You've got the supply to the filter and the return, and I was going to try to come up with a way to run oil through here, um, and that's not probably an original idea, and I don't know how much crud is in there. I'd like to maybe it'd probably be better to run it through this first and then to my filter and then back to the main oil galley but these things need heat now to put this kind of carburetor on a, with a stock exhaust is that going to help it no if you've got a 2276 with dual 48s on it can't you still drive it on the road it's worthless in my opinion if you can't drive it on the road on the street and it behave and run as good and smooth as stock it's it's junk I, I don't want no part of it I come from the sand rail sand dune background and all of us guys had engines that ran as smooth as stock because there's times that you have to articulate around tricky little holes and dips and things and you you can't have a drag race motor and I love that type of motor and that's what we can use possible to achieve that with this. And it's not necessarily over carburating. This, uh, this 30 picked one carburetor has a 24 millimeter Venturi. This 34, here's a, both of them right here. Look at the, look at the size of the base of this. This is a 34 pick three and this is that baby Dell. The one I want to use. Look at the difference in size of that float bowl. You know, this is meant to be used as a pair. That's what it was produced for, designed for. And people are always asking me about this weird thing. Can I just one run one Cadron carburetor? Can I do no? It's not made for that. See these these little vents here on top? See that up there? There's two of them. See this one right here? This little tiny thing? That's not your accelerator pump squirter. That comes shooting down from the side. But this thing is a, what did we call it? A high-speed auxiliary. It comes right straight from the flow. When the volume of air gets to be so pronounced that it's going through there, it creates such a low-pressure area, it'll start drawing fuel through there. You'll go lean if that doesn't work. And that's why these carburetors work in the center mount for four cylinders doesn't mean you can take this carburetor and put one on each side either it's not made to do that the 32s and the 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 34 ICTs and all that that's what they're made for that's how that's supposed to work you need a high speed circuit these these uh, 40 IDF Weber's um, like this single one here this is not made for this application it will work but the, the problem and where the issue comes in, you have an idle circuit. It runs on there. And if this was a graph, just look at my hand. You have an idle circuit, and then you have a progressive circuit, and then you have a main circuit. And right between those three, there's a low spot. There's a lean spot. And it's real easy. Most of the time when you're driving around town on flat ground, it's paved, and you're cruising, you're in the idle circuit and barely into the progression. Your throttle is just barely open at all. You know, it's just, feel your foot on the floor. It's just, you're barely touching it. And therein lies the problem. You can get into a situation if you're going a long distance where you're parked in that lean spot. And if you run your engine lean and you have one of these types of uh, distributors, you get into a lean situation with a retarded spark and your cylinder temperature goes up and your engine temperature goes up and it shortens the life of your valves and it shortens the life of your engine. That's why all this stuff has to be thought through and chosen correctly. These dual Cadron carburetors are perfect. They are made for the Volkswagen air-cooled engine and they work perfectly. They've got uh, two different sizes, I believe, and I was going someplace with this. The 34, 
The 30 has a 24 millimeter Venturi. The 34 Pick 3 has a 26 millimeter Venturi. This Baby Dell has a 27 millimeter Venturi. It's another perfect carburetor. If you've got the correct linkage and manifold, then it works. Those dual IDF 40 Webers have 28 millimeter Venturis. <laughs> this is a 44 IDF. It will not work on a 1600 period. If you've got a 1600 that's modified to produce 120 horsepower, it'll work. At wide open throttle, it'll work great. Will you be happy with it around town? No. Personal experience. You won't get it out of the driveway if you try to put this 44 on this manifold, not have heat, and not and have the... These originally come as pairs with 36 millimeter Venturis. Somebody put 32s in here. That's still too big. You need... The 28s are smaller, and I'm not sure. I'm going to have to take one of the 40s back off that manifold, take this one off, and put it on here and see if I can make it work. And I'm hoping, I'm counting on that heat. It, the size of the carburetor doesn't make any difference. You could take this baby Dell and put it on a 2276, and it'll run. If you had a mild cam, you could run it. But what would happen is if you got it up in RPM, it'll just bleh, it'll go away because you you it can't breathe. You, you know, it, if it runs out of air, that's the whole concept. More cubic inches, bigger carburetors. The the Chevrolet 350 ran on a single barrel carburetor, but they commonly came and said cars with a two barrel carburetor and if you were a hot rider you change it to a four barrel carburetor you change the intake manifold put on a four barrel carburetor and maybe some blackjack headers remember those the 49 dollar blackjack headers that would leak like crazy and uh overheat your fuel lines and yeah but it would go like hell there is this big horsepower adder if you put the exhaust on and nothing else, your engine's going to sound louder. It's going to really run worse. In my humble opinion, in my personal experience, that's what happens. So, we're going to add some carburation. I'm going to start with that one because of the heat. This exhaust isn't going to affect it because we haven't changed the displacement. We've added the... Racial rocker cam on the intakes only. I'm pretty proud of myself for experiment with that and succeeding. I was scared to death the whole time that those clips were going to break and that the oil relief cover was going to act up again and I was going to be stuck far from home. So I wasn't hot rodding it and over revving it, but that's not how you drive your car the majority of the time. And this engine is running cool. It has all the stock under tin just like stock, even you see it's got the little tin pieces here, just like if it was in a car. This has got all the correct tin on it. What's missing is the thermostat. I don't know if it's got the thermostat wire on it. I don't think it does. But it's got the, the cooling flaps, the shutters are still in there, and the spring is holding them at wide open. And you don't have to worry about the air shutting them closed. This thing's made to fail in the full cooling position. And it's just springtime, so the engine's running cooling. So the next option that you have is a power pulley. Here is one right here. It happens to be a sand seal. One of the reasons I'm thinking about this is because this one's leaking. I don't know what this is. I, did, I put this on, took it out of stock 10 years ago. For some reason... I have an urge for ice cream. Anybody else have an urge for ice cream? Look at this. Have you guys seen one of those? I haven't seen one of those in years. But you never forget that song, do you? <laughs> Look at the dude driving it. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that drive you crazy to listen to that thing all day long? <laughs> So, if by putting a power pulley, it's going to make a car accelerate faster. It takes horsepower to run your cooling fan. Okay? And if 
your engine's not having a heating problem or you just drive it in the mornings when it's cool or in the spring and the fall you it's easy to change I don't have the right belt because it's going to take a shorter different belt and see see the difference in size here that's gonna this is worth a couple horsepower right there slowing that fan down here's the stock steel one and it has that oil return groove in there you'll uh you can get them on the aluminum ones here's a here's a cast aluminum one that weighs more than the stock one so this is good for vibrations harmonics balancing maybe a high rpm motor but this one's going to rev quicker that's why they call these things power pulleys this thing only weighs one pound and that was with the uh with the back of that on there so that might be an option what's another option when it comes to weight okay i still forgot to look up i think a stock flywheel weighs uh oh what is it 16 and a half pounds something like that you can get one of these lightened flywheels and you have several to choose from here you'll never be able to buy that one this belongs in a museum this flywheel came on my original 1776 sand car i didn't know anything about it but i know that my car sounded different every time i tried to use the starting motor this is a seven and a half pound flywheel guys that's right it's an spg it came out it was part of the roller bearing crankshaft kit it even has a unique double lip seal and you'll notice that it has a eight dowel crank now when you buy these aftermarket things and they have eight dowels doesn't mean you can't use them on a stock four dowel crankshaft there's one hole that is off center if you stare at this long enough I'm seeing more space right here so one of these holes might be because this even has a, a hole for puller but look at that it's made out of aluminum weighs seven and a half pounds and your engine will rev so quick you won't know what's going on it just will jerk your head back but the reason I took it off is it destroyed my engine um, after several thousand miles not knowing what I had and driving it a lot it started smoking the rings started leaking by I had blow by so bad that it was smoking and I didn't realize it what was the problem I thought it was the piston rings I had no idea that the engine was being revved so much by me and the previous owner and I didn't know what the age was and it it was out of balance and on, it didn't have a counterweighted crankshaft and it had a stock crankshaft wasn't welded counterweighted or nothing and it beat itself to death and those pistons were getting cockeyed in there and um it was blowing by so this would definitely be like for a weekend drag race situation or a friday night special um you don't want to run a flywheel like that all the time if you have a balanced engine uh, and you can do this um I, I need to put you on the stand to demonstrate a little thing here oh we're having fun today aren't we get my get my tripod here okay um there's two different styles of light and flywheels that you can get and one is like forty dollars and it's made out of cast iron but it it weighs they cut enough material off it where it uh it's reduced weight you can they cut the material off this outside edge now this is a cast cast iron flywheel a lightened cast iron flywheel and when i built my two liter that's in the baja i had this flywheel in there and i ran it for two years and it worked just fine but it always seemed to have a drip underneath the, the flywheel seal and it wasn't the o-ring i changed the o-ring i changed the seal in the engine and i just couldn't get this thing i thought man what's with these seals it just doesn't leak and 
if you look at the metal, it has a porosity about it. And I knew that maybe somehow this was eaten through my seal or creating heat or something. And I, I took uh, 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper and I, I rub it and polish it and I um, took Scotch Brite and Comet Cleanser and I rubbed it and rubbed it and rubbed it thinking I could smooth this out but it never got shiny it it just look at the flywheel look, look at the difference in color this one's chrome moly this one's cast iron another way that you can tell if you're at a swap meet and you see one of these light and flywheels and you're wondering if it's a cast one now there's some people that worry that these things will blow up you never want to put this in a a car, race car or an engine that's going to turn over 6,000 rpm it, this thing could let go the manufacturer tells you not to do that when you know if you're the original purchaser I think it comes on the sheet there's a caution on that you don't think somebody would manufacture a flywheel like this knowing that it's going to hurt somebody or explode you just have to be intelligent enough and that's why you come back to my channel because I teach you about these things this is a cast flywheel hear it? it's just like a cast you can purchase a counterweighted cast crank 69 millimeter cast crank I think they made them on all the different signs and if you uh, the crankshaft if you put a piece of string around it and hit it like that that's what you'll get I have one in one of my cars, it works fine because I, I have a stock cam in it. Now here's a absolutely gorgeous chromoly flywheel. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Isn't that gorgeous? This thing, you can do whatever you want with. <laughs> this thing's gorgeous, and I'm not using it in this engine. I'm going to put the cheap oil on there. That's what I'm going to do. And it's going to leak. But guess what? This is an old engine, and it has leaks in it anyhow. Yours probably does too, so what's <laughs> one more? It's not going to, like, pour out, but you're going to have a drip underneath it if you use this kind of flywheel. Tell them Easy Jeezy said so. I know from experience. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I took it off. There's also an O-ring in here. You have to make sure that you have that O-ring and it's the correct size for that. That's a possibility for a place to leak. And will this fit on a stock four dowel crankshaft? Yes, it will. You just have to move it around till you get all four of them that line up and you're going to have four spares and it doesn't make it weaker and it doesn't hurt a thing and your engine will rev quicker and it will give you the illusion of power because everybody associates power with acceleration if you take the spare tire out of your car if you take the heater boxes off your engine and put J tubes on in their place. If you take the back seat out, if you buy a lighter battery, if you uh, do all, any or all of these things to make your car lighter, it will accelerate faster and it will climb hills better. Power to weight ratio. If you change your tire size, if you make put on bigger, wider tires, it's going to slow your car down. It might handle better in the corners, but it's not going to accelerate. You know, and the time you uh, lose from acceleration, you might make up for it and grip on the corners if, if that's what you do. But it's certainly not a benefit. Um, just depends on what you're after. <laughs> this is aluminum. It's aluminum with a steel bolted on steel back. And then it's got your steel face here. And... Uh, this, uh, you do whatever you want with one of these. Uh, I think it belongs in the museum. I had it in the attic, and by golly, it, uh, it had some interesting crosshatch marks here from when they milled it to flatten it out. And, um, but it only weighs seven and a half pounds. Uh, I should put that on there since this engine's gonna be not put into use. Maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see what my mood is later in the day. And, uh, 
Yeah, I'm feeling pretty pleased with myself. Everything we've done so far has not hurt the engine. It's made it work um, better for my application and it might work for you too. You just have to have the knowledge and you know I'm here experimenting and I know that I'm not doing anything new. There's people that have been here before me. You know, we, you look at all these products and you look at all these things. Have I created them? Hell no! Are you confu confused about what to buy for your car? Of course you are, because there's so much to choose from now. There's such a huge profit on all of this sort of stuff for people to make money on it. There are companies that were formed and they were at the racetrack. You ever go to the racetrack and see a sponsor's name on the side of a car? That's because they want you to buy products from them, no matter what it is. It might be a dry cleaning on the side of a car who's sponsoring a car. Look at the damn NASCAR. They got M&M's cars now. How dumb is that? That's not too automotive, but they're they're giving a lot of money to, to those people to put M&M's on their car. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but I don't know. <laughs> it's all entertainment, right? And it's what we do and we buy into. And whoever wins the race on Sunday, we go buy the parts they used and our M&Ms on Monday. <laughs> so that's, that's the name of the game. That's marketing and that's how it all works. Chrome sells, but when I had my Harley, they used to say, Chrome don't get you home. And they were right. So uh, it looks nice though when it's all shined up at home. So I hope you're having a good day. I hope this helps you. And we'll uh, sort of see. I got I got some work to do here. I got to pull the engine out. I got to take the intake manifolds off and this manifold and find some gaskets. And uh, I might be able to use those. I might just use these stock end pieces. Maybe I'll only have to take the one side off and I can slide the other one and not even disturb this intake manifold maybe I'll just do it on the other side here I can't remember it's been a while since I've had that on there and I, I've tried all of these out and you know then something something happens to the car or the engine I get tired of it and I put something else in it's just a luxury that I have and you will too if you stick with this hobby for 30 years like I have there was the Harley years that this stuff didn't get a whole lot of use. I don't know. I got all absorbed into the Harley Davidson scene and you know <laughs> I I looked at those guys and I thought, "Man, look at the camaraderie." And I loved the sound of a Harley Davidson. It sounded like my heart when it was at an idle, you know, that potato, 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 potato. I loved that sound. I loved that sound. And my little short legs, and I, I could touch the ground when I got on my Harley. And I had two of them. Uh, I had a 2000 Super Glide Sport with the Twinkie 88. I think it was the second year that it was out. And I had a 93 Sportster with some uh, mini apes on it. And once I got that little one, I basically parked the big one and only took it on longer rides. And I just used the little one around town. But I need more room for more stuff. You know, I got my yoga bag now. And uh, I, if I go out on an afternoon ride, I want to take a jacket and all this stuff. And I hated that about the motorcycle. You're, I was never comfortable. If I put all the safety gear on, I was too hot. And uh, in the mornings, it was too cold. And then you'd get caught in the rain, and I'd be cold from wet, you know. So I just uh, I got tired of dodging. I had so many near misses almost every time I got on the bike. And I thought, you know, I don't want to be a cripple when I retire. I want to be able to crawl underneath my Volkswagen and work on it. So I got rid of the motorcycles, and um, now I'm in these suicide machines. And uh, I enjoy you guys coming back to my channel and hanging out with me. And we're having uh, we're having fun, and we'll just uh, we'll keep doing this stuff. Yeah, I think I'm going to go inside and have some ice cream. I don't know why I got that urge. <laughs>
<laughs> you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.